Hi, I'm Alistair Ben and welcome to um, Case Study 3. What we're going to be doing in this video is creating a single 32-bit RAW file. Well, it's still a TIFF, but it's going to be 32-bit that we can bring back into Lightroom and make fairly dramatic adjustments without having to go to the trouble of manually blending exposures together. Now, what I've got in front of me here are five bracketed exposures from two seconds, four, eight, 15, and 30 seconds. Um, very high contrast scene after sunset. You can see the, the glow on the horizon there. Lots of shadow detail in the foreground. Now, what I want to do is in the develop module, I will start with my chromatic and sharpen preset, which is just um, tick these two boxes and add a little bit of sharpening as we had in previous videos. I will then synchronize, synchronize the settings so all five files have exactly the same situation applied to them. I'm not going to do anything else here in Lightroom, but we're going to go straight into Edit, now, depending to on HDR Pro the number of files you're opening, the size of your files in terms of the number of megapixels, and the power capacity of your computer, this process can take quite a lot of time. Um, so this is what we see, is it's been automated, so it's the Merge to HDR Pro has been opened, uh, and the five files have been imported. We can see now that from our shadows all the way through to our brightest highlights, we have detail in our file. So it doesn't matter where this uh, slider is placed, but what we do want to do is remove ghosting. And we will decide on which of the five frames we are going to choose to use as our base image to, to remove movement, to make sure there's no movement. And I've decided just arbitrarily to use that one there, one of the longer exposures, because there's not a lot of uh, there's not a lot of movement in the in the sky. So let's just stick with that. Once we click OK, it opens the file in Photoshop. Uh, from, from there, it's just a simple case of saving it back into Lightroom. Uh, so we shall just give this a moment. And here's your 32-bit file in Photoshop. We're not going to do anything with it, but we're going to save it. So I'm just going to do Command-S on the Mac, which will then save the file back into Lightroom. So I can close this, Command-W, hide Photoshop, and here, back in Lightroom, we have this file as a TIFF, and we can now do some adjusting. Normally, in a, if we look at this original RAW file, you have a latitude of five stops either way, so plus five, minus five. With a 32-bit TIFF, that is extended to plus 10 and minus 10. So we do have a huge um, range of tones available to us. Now, from this point on, it's really just a case of finding that balance between shadow detail and highlight detail. Now, <clears throat> we're going to end up with a fairly flat file because when you increase contrast or when you when you represent more con uh, more dynamic range in a file, you actually decrease contrast. So as you bring the highlights down and the shadows up, you're constricting the amount of data within the more central, central areas, um, and you end up with uh, a less contrasted file. So they can tend to look a little bit flat. If we start adding a little bit of clarity, touch of vibrance and saturation, and maybe just a little S curve to give it some pop, you will see that very, very quickly we have gone from these five raw files, each of which is incapable of rendering the entire scene, to this one single file, which we produced through automated processes. We haven't had to do any manual masking. Um, and, you know, with a little bit of work and a little bit of time, this, this file could be made to look pretty attractive. So that is a really quick way of doing things to create a 32-bit, we'll call it a raw file, even though it's a TIFF, 
within Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, which is a really quick fix. So that's the end of uh, video number three.